What's good, YouTube? We are back again with another video. We have another Jordan Vault video for you guys. Now, this is the Jordan 20 original packaging and all. I know I've said this story plenty of times, but I actually used this sneaker as a motorcycle sneaker. I was riding my first bike, learning how to ride. Instead of buying motorcycle boots, I bought the Jordan 20 because it was inspired by a motorcycle boot. So pretty cool story. I'm one of my first Jordans. So I've always been into Jordans. I've always been into Colorways Past 14. And this is one of those examples of me wearing Jordans back in 2005, right? Dope box. So just to show you the label. So here we have the Jordan 20, right? You see the picture of the Jordan 20. And then on the box, it says Varsity Red, White, and Black. Jordan XX. Jordan 20, of course. LeBron just had a LeBron 20. So, <laughs> we're going to see a LeBron 30-something 10 years from now. That's just where we're at right now. And this one was a Midwest colorway. I believe they had regional releases. So, the original colorway was the black and white, which I have upstairs. Um, I just decided to show this one because it's nice looking and it's different. I believe they had regional releases as well, just like the 19. So this is the Midwest version. They had a white in North Carolina colorway, which I think was a West version. I'm going to have to look it up and maybe I'll put some pictures up so you guys can see. They had different regional versions. The Jordan 19 had the same thing. I may do a Jordan 19 video just showing you the regional releases as well, right? This box. Velcro on the box, different box than usual. And then throughout the box, you guys probably don't see it, but there's actually some design throughout the box. And then, same as here, and then you have these pipes. So it's kind of like a double entendre. It stands for motorcycle pipes, but also for the six championships, one for every championship he won. And it's also on the back of the sneaker. So there's that as well. And then you see this Jordan. So just to kind of give you a little insight on this Jordan. Oh, my heat's coming on. So give me a second. Let me wait until the heat shuts off. And then we'll be back at this video. Hold on. What's good, YouTube? <laughs> so I started shooting this video, right? My heat went on, so I decided to just, you know, take a little break so it doesn't mess up the flow of the video, etc. And I never came back downstairs to finish the video. So it is the next day, and I'm finishing this video. This is the Jordan 20. I showed you a little bit about the box. Great, Jordan. Now, I wanted to talk about this font. So this font, you would see, I believe, the 16 and 17. Let me just double check, right? Because we have a 16 right here. And you would see this font on the side of that, plus probably on the boxes. And then also on the Jordan 17, hold on one second, you would see this font again, right? You would see this font now on a race influenced Jordan. Like I said earlier, this is inspired by motorcycles and then the details of it. I know I showed a little bit earlier, but you have just some of the details on it. This is the first Jordan with laser etching, right? So it also had a pretty cool box with Velcro, right? Something similar we've seen recently had a Velcro, I think the 36. In this box, you have more laser etching design on the interior of the box. And then you have the breakdown of the technology. And again, I think IPS was used on this as the sneaker cushion. And we're gonna show you basically what it looks like. So you get to see what it is. Now, this is my favorite colorway. Although I'm showing you the red version, essentially, or the Chicago Bulls version, this is my favorite colorway of the Jordan 20. Now, I do have these as well. But I just wanted to show something a little bit different in general, right? So we take a look at these, but let me put these to the side really quickly. Let's see what else is in the box. So we have the Jordan 20 card, I guess. All right, <laughs> pretty cool. Uh, what I like about this is these are pretty much all the original colorways in the Chicago form, except the 15 
a 16 and 17, and a 19. Everything was done in this like Chicago colorway. 20 years. This was a big deal back then, right? 20 years of having a sneaker was a big, big deal. And then on the opposite side, you have this hand. It uh, looks a little off. If it does look off, it's because it has six fingers, right? Six fingers, <laughs> which is crazy. Let me bring this back a little bit. So this was a pretty cool little thing that they put inside the box. Then we have a mesh bag. Now, you know, this is for all my bowlers out there. You place the sneakers in which you play on court, typically in the bag, right? So you're gonna rock this, put the sneakers in, you put this on your backpack or your back or whatever. What you don't wanna do is play in sneakers that you wear on the concrete, getting all that dirt. You know, if there's rain and gook on the regular floor that we have on our pavements, you don't wanna bring that onto the court. So you'll rock, let's just say, you'll rock this sneaker, right, to the court, no problem. You're not gonna play ball in these. I would at least hope not. And then this is your performance sneaker and this is what you rock in your bag. Then when you're done, you go back to these and then you put these back in your bag, right? That's how ballers do it. Now, I think it's a nice little feature. I think it's dope. In fact, I know you guys aren't that familiar probably with these, but these are the Nike Alpha Flies and they have the same thing. They have a little bag in which they put inside the box so you can take these sneakers with you, but going to your races, you're wearing a different pair of sneakers, right? We do have the paper still, I guess. You have some sort of paper left. And we have this laser etching in the paper as well. So you guys can see that. Pretty cool. I love the packaging done. The 19 also had a bag, but the 1920, the 17 had crazy packaging. They actually did a really good job on a lot of these Jordans, especially the new flagship model. They need to put some of this energy into the new flagship model, I think, currently, right? So we have the Jordan 37. Now the Jordan 37 Tatum PE had a special box for it. It had this overlining cover like you get on the DJ Khaled 5s. And I think that that was super dope, man. It was just creative, it's something different. It feels like you're getting something a little special with the flagship models. And we're starting to see this super cool packaging with every other Jordan. But I think they could put a little bit more into the flagship model, in my opinion. So maybe they do, maybe they don't, who knows. But this is the box, right? So let's put the box to the side. And then we have the sneaker for you. And this is the Jordan 20. Now this version is a little bit different than the white and black pair. And the differences are on the white and black pair, this whole panel is in a patent leather, off white, white kind of color. The suede toe piece is still on the white and black pair, but the laser etching is all over the strap, right? On this one, we have a plain strap with just a Jumpman logo on it. And then the laser etching is done throughout the new buck on the main part of the upper, right? Let's take a look at the etching. So here we see in detail some of the etching that we have, right? And then you have, like for example, you see the Jordan 14 right here. Hold on, right? You see it right there, the Jordan 14. You have a Jordan 6 right here. A Jordan 12, Jordan 4. So you have different models of Jordans. Now this is pretty cool. The storytelling took things throughout his childhood into growing up and into, of course, playing basketball. So you have, just to give you an example, all different models of the Jordan. But not only that, you had like a car he had back when he played in North Carolina. And then you had like a Black Panther throughout. And then you have like championship rings. So great storytelling. And then we have these pipes, which are motorcycle pipes, but also uh, every ring stands for each championship. And then you have one, two, three, one, two, three. So we have the four, five, and six on this model. And then you have 20, 
23. So this is obviously his number. This is obviously the model of the sneaker. Then we have different models on this one, just done differently. I don't think every pair was done the same. So that's pretty cool. And then on this one, you have 85, which it all started in 1985. And then you have 05, which was the year that these released, right? Other little details you have is the Jordan on the strap here. Very nicely done. Right, and then you have metal aglets. You have another lace cover, and then it reveals MJ on or underneath the lace cover. So that's pretty cool. Only thing I don't like about these that if they snag on your laces, it can de-thread the lace a little bit. So that's kind of corny. And then you have that full length cushioning system. This is the IPS system. Again, I wasn't a huge fan of it. Maybe a fresh pair of IPS shoe, you could kind of feel it, but wasn't my favorite cushioning setup. And then the dots here are 69 dots. I'm not going to count them, but the 69 dots are for his career high against Cleveland, right? So 69 dots, apparently that's what that was for, right? You just take a look at this sneaker, man. It's a really nice shoe, very clean and different, right? Now we've seen a couple of ball players playing these. Ray Allen played in these. Gary Payton played in these. Uh, I want to say Mike Bibby played in these, although he preferred the low, which I do also have. And those were really interesting as well. The Jordan 20, like low, mid top, or whatever you want to call it, um, it had an embossed leather that had pretty much all of the details of what you see on these, right? It wasn't laser etched like this, but it was embossed. So here is the Jordan 20, man. Um, another cool Jordan just out the Jordan vault that I wanted to show you guys. I love doing these kind of videos. I know I said this before. So, you know, of course I fuck with the new stuff, but the old stuff really brings back some, you know, some really cool nostalgia. So on that note, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. We're out. Peace.